If you've taken a DNA test with Family Tree DNA, you may be a little confused about all the information that you're getting from the website. Well, let me walk through some of the basic information for those of you who are just beginning. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics and this is a segment of DNA. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell if you want to be notified about upcoming episodes. Today I'm going to go through a basic introduction to family tree DNA information. Now this is assuming that you've already taken a family tree DNA test and that it has been sent in and you've got your results back and now you're trying to understand what it is that you're looking at. So let's go over to the website and walk you through some of the information there. So here we are on the Family Tree DNA website and you can see that they have a lot of information right off the bat. Now, on the left-hand side, this is basically your own personal account information. So it's going to have your name, your email address, your city, um, phone number if you have that information in there, as well as the different tests that you've taken. And so you can actually take multiple different tests with Family Tree DNA. They have their autosomal tests, they have their Y DNA tests, and they have their mitochondrial DNA tests. So that list is going to be listed down there as well. It has links that you can then also go and change any of that personal information on your account. Everything else on this page is links to your different tests and the information that you can find on those. So let's go over what some of them are. So first off is the family tree part right up here. Now the family tree part is where you actually put in a family tree. Usually you're going to upload this as a GEDCOM file and one of the advantages of this is we're going to be able to attach DNA to the family tree. The next section here is the family finder test and this is the autosomal test. This is what's actually being compared whenever you're matching on GEDmatch to people from Ancestry or 23andMe or MyHeritage. Then we have the Y DNA test. Now for males, if you have taken a Y DNA test, then you're going to be able to have some information here as far as your matches and some of the haplogroup information as well. As we scroll down, we can see that we have the last type of test, which is the mitochondrial DNA test. And again, just like with the Y DNA test, anyone can take a mitochondrial DNA test and it's separate from the autosomal DNA test. Here is where you're going to be able to find information about that mitochondrial DNA test. Now, one thing you might have noticed right up at the very top, just above where I am in this video, we have the haplogroup assignments. Now, depending on which test you have taken, you have to have taken a mitochondrial DNA test and you have to take a Y DNA test. It will assign a haplogroup to you. Now, I've shown you in other videos that because of the amount of DNA that Family Tree DNA tests, and really because of the amount of DNA that every company tests, those haplogroup determinations may be a little different between companies, but they're going to be in the general ballpark of what your haplogroup is. So let's get started and let's look at the Family Tree to start with. Now on the Family Tree part of the website, you're going to need to upload a GEDCOM file and you can upload that GEDCOM file up in the top corner over here. Uh, let me circle that for you. And if you don't have a GEDCOM file already uploaded, then it's just going to have yourself in here. Now you can see down here with myself, it shows that I have my family finder test, my mitochondrial DNA test, and my Y DNA test all attached to me as a person. Originally, this is going to show the family view and it's going to show four generations. Now, if you want to change the number of generations, then you're just going to change that in this box and you can show one, two, three, or four. If you want to look at the pedigree view, we're going to go to this next box right here and that will show you it in the pedigree format, which is a more traditional genealogy chart that most people are familiar with. Now, on the pedigree view, this is again, only showing, it looks like one, two, three, four, five generations, but it has the links where you can go through and you can look at the other generations by clicking on the next people. Likewise, if you click on any one of these people, it's going to show you some more information about that person's profile. Now these can all be edited in Family Tree DNA. So once you've uploaded that initial GEDCOM file, you can make changes to this as needed. 
And you're going to do that as you're adding your matches later on. Next, let's look at our family finder tool. Now I'm actually going to go over the my origins and the ancient origins first, and then we'll go into the match list, which will take us to some of these other tools as well. Now the my origins is the family tree DNA version of the ethnicity estimates or the admixture estimates that some of the other websites use. And so you can see that it has a list of different populations around the world and an estimate of what I am based on their analysis. So according to Family Tree DNA, 94% um, of my DNA looks like British Isles DNA and another 4% looks like it is from Eastern Europe. They also have the map that when we click on it, we can see roughly where those two populations look at. So even though it says the British Isles, you can see that that covers quite a bit of not just the British Isles, but also into the northwestern part of Europe as well. And the Eastern Europe follows a fairly large area as well over in Eastern Europe, all the way from uh, Ukraine up to Lithuania, over into Germany and down into the former Yugoslavia area. Now, if we look at the ancient origins, it's a little bit different. And what this is based on is this based on some different populations that inhabited areas anciently. So for instance, for Europe, there are the Middle Age invaders, there's the hunter gatherers, and there's the farmers. Now, based on my DNA, I'm really a pretty even split between farmer and hunter gatherer with some of the Middle Age invaders later on. And that has to do more with history and the migrations of people um, that has been linked up with DNA in a way. And so it's interesting to look at. But one thing I would say about both the ancient origins as well as the my origins, the ethnicity results, is these are really for entertainment. They are estimates based off of some analysis that's been done on DNA, but it by no means should be taken as this is absolutely true and your ancestors are from here and you should have ancestors from here on your family tree. Now, from a overall continental population level, then yeah, this is pretty good. Basically, my ancestors look like they are almost all from Europe. And that matches up really well with what I have found. But I can tell you right now that 94% of my ancestry is not from the British Isles. I do have some ancestry that is from other parts of Europe as well. So the match list is the bread and butter of genealogy. And I'll go through each one of these callings to see what information you can actually start to begin to look at as you're going through your matches. You have first off the name and the information about an individual match. And there's a few key things in here. The little envelope, that is going to be the email of that match. So you can contact them and solicit more information. The next is a little notepad. If you want to take notes, then you can use the notepad to keep notes about that particular match. And finally is the little icon that looks like it might be a tree and that is a link to their family tree. So if it is blue, then that means they do have a family tree. If it is gray, then they don't have a family tree. And you can see that each one of those icons is different for each person. Now there's also another couple of icons here. There is a paternal and a maternal line. Once you start connecting your DNA matches, Family Tree DNA is gonna go through and start assigning other matches as either maternal or paternal based on those matches. And so that can help you out in identifying where these people might be related to you. The next column here is your match date column. And all this is is the date that that match occurs. This might be the date that you uploaded your data, that it did its initial analysis, or it might be the date that they uploaded their data and did a match with you. So if you want to see what new matches are, then you can actually just sort by this match date and see all the newest ones of those matches for you. Next is the relationship range. And on the relationship range, this is going to be based on the amount of shared DNA you have and an estimate of where they think you might fall into that family tree. And you can see there's some that are first to second cousin, others that are first to third cousin. That probably shares in less DNA and it's looking more like it might be more distant. You can have some that are spanning a big broad range or others that are only spanning a couple of potential relationships. The key here is to remember that these are the initial estimate based off of that amount of shared DNA. And what you may find specifically 
will vary with these. Now, these relationships don't take into account necessarily all of your half cousins or once removed, twice removed, things like that. So they're going to be very basic, first to third cousins, first to second cousins, second to fourth cousins, and the like. Next, we have the shared centimorgans and the longest block. And this is the amount of DNA that you share with these people. Now, one thing that Family Tree DNA does is they include all the small segments into this calculation. And so if you actually remove the small segments like most of the other companies do, you may find that, hey, this match that says 208 in Family Tree DNA is really only 150 compared to everyone else. Now, where that comes into play is with determining a relationship or estimating a relationship. If you remove a lot of that DNA, some of those relationships are less likely than other relationships. And so it's important that you understand that this includes all those small segments. And I have a video where you can actually remove those small segments in a spreadsheet so that you have a match list that's comparable to what you would find at any of the other companies. Now, this also has the longest block, which you can see is a rough, rough indication of how closely you might be related. In other words, the longer the block, the more likely that it is a close relationship. Although once you get down below about 30, that's not so important anymore. Next, we have the X match column. If you match with somebody on your X DNA, then it's just going to indicate that right here. Now, for men, this means that that match is probably on your mother's side because that's the only place that you get that X DNA from. The linked relationship is what you have actually linked on your tree. So these are people that I have actually linked on my tree with their DNA, and this is the exact relationship. So if you actually take a look at the estimated relationship, it can be quite different from what the exact relationship is. So for instance, this one that I've highlighted right here, that's just behind my head. It is a first cousin to third cousin by the estimate, but it's a second great uncle by the actual relationship. And finally, there is the ancestral surnames. If you have actually entered these in, then it's going to show a list of potential ancestral surnames. And you can see just over my shoulder right here, um, there is one of these that has some different surnames on there. Not everybody puts this information in. This is something that you have to put in yourself. Let me point out a few of the tools that you might be wanting to use. First off, there is the chromosome browser. Now, what you need to do with the chromosome browser is you need to go through and you need to check some of these boxes to be able to compare with people. We'll do that in just a second. Another one is the in common with. If you want to check just one of those boxes and click on the in common with, that's going to be your shared match list. And similar to that, but really the exact opposite is the not in common with. So if you click on one of those boxes, then the not in common with is going to be the people that you don't share in common. So these are some of the basic tools. And let me show you the chromosome browser, which I think is pretty important. In the chromosome browser, you're seeing which parts of DNA you match with these people. What I've done is I've selected three people, one, two, three, that are all related. And I know they're all related on my grandmother, my paternal grandmother's side. So a lot of these segments are going to line up. And as we go through, we can actually see some of these segments. So for instance, there's a segment between two of them that line up. There's some segments over here that line up. We have a couple of big segments down here that are lining up. And this allows you to do some other research. And I'm not gonna get into it in this video, but I talk about how you can use this information in some of your other research to help find some matches that you might not be able to find otherwise. So now that we've gone over a little bit about the family finder, let's go and look at the Y DNA and the mitochondrial DNA. Now, both of these are roughly the same as far as the information they have. It's just from different lines. So I'm just gonna go over the Y DNA and some of that there. So first off, we'll talk about the ancient ancestral origins and the haplogroups. And then we'll go into the matches to finish it off. Now with the ancestral origins, what it's looking at is it's looking at where people that match you are potentially from. And so you can see from this 
table right here, there's a lot of people that are from Europe or European colonies, former European colonies, and that's where the majority of my Y maternal ancestors are from. It breaks it down by exact matches and then also by genetic distance. In other words, if you are more distantly related to some people, where are those people from? Now, if you have taken one of the Y tests or the mitochondrial test, then there is going to be a haplogroup associated with that. And that haplogroup fits into the overall family tree in some way. And that's all that the haplogroup link here is showing you is where that fits in. I am R-M269, and that is a subgroup of R-P297, which is a subgroup of R-L389. And you can see as you can go up, you can actually go back and see where you link all the way back to the original haplogroups. Now, when we come to the Y DNA matches or your mitochondrial DNA matches, the list is going to look a lot different than what the autosomal DNA match list is. And that's because you're comparing different things. And so different things are important. Now your Y DNA and your mitochondrial DNA follow either your paternal line or your maternal line all the way back through the generations. So they can tell you some specific things about people that are very distant to you that autosomal DNA can't. But for most of your family tree, Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA is not going to do anything for you because it only follows those specific lines. But taking a look at what you have here is this is my matches at 67 markers. And you can see that there are some different things, but most important thing is the name. And so with Y DNA, I'm concerned about the surname. You'll notice my surname is Lee, but if you've watched my channel a lot, you found that uh, about what four or five generations ago, I had my paternal ancestor actually changed his last name to Lee from Garnett. And we have a Garnett there. And if we go down even further, we have another Garnett right there. So there's no Lee's in this line at all, although there is some other names that show up multiple times. For instance, this Sanders that shows up three times. Now these may all be related as far as being brothers or uncles or things like that. But there's another name called Knuckles that also shows up a couple of times just in my match list. Now, all of these are pretty distant. It has a genetic distance of at least four. I don't have anybody that is closely related to me. So while they may be back, these might be several hundred years or even a thousand years or more back before we actually have a common ancestor with any of these people. One of the things that you can do if you've taken one of these tests is put in who your earliest known ancestor is. And so that's a nice way to be able to see whether or not you match up with them. In this case, you can see several of these people have put in different names of their earliest known ancestor. It also gives you the Y DNA haplogroup. Now, if you are related, then you should have the same Y DNA haplogroup. In some cases, you can actually see right down here, there are some of these haplogroups that are a little bit different, and that's probably because they're a little bit more accurate. They more than likely have taken a larger DNA test, which we can see here, they've actually taken the DNA 111 and they've taken the big Y test, which gives a much better determination of the haplogroup. And so that is the kind of information that you're gonna see in the match list. It also has a place where you can email them and you can take notes about that match, just like you saw with the autosomal test. Now, Family Tree DNA has a lot more information. In fact, if there's one thing that people who are just getting into Family Tree DNA the first time is that it might be information overload. They provide you just about everything that you need for it. So take it slowly and start with some of the basics as far as matching. Don't worry about all this information at once. And I've only covered a little bit about what Family Tree DNA has to offer in this video. So if you'd like to learn more and you have a specific question, put it in the comments below. If you have any questions about getting started in Family Tree DNA, then also put that in the comments and I'll try to answer it. And if you have suggestions about features you'd like to see later on, then let me know and I can make a video about it. 
And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends.